Hello, <coughs> my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you're interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 181. Please turn to it. Page number 181, question number 205. Here's what the question says. We are told that we have John and Mary and they are, work, they are going to work on some project, some work. And the person who hired them, John and Mary, that person has paid each one of them X dollars in advance before they begin the job, before they begin the work. The, the employer uh, paid John X dollars and Mary X dollars. Okay, so far so good. It turned out the way the, the, way the, the, the events unfolded is that John ended up working 10 hours and Mary ended up working eight hours. As you can see, they did not work the same number of hours, but they got the same amount of money. John got X dollars, Mary got X dollars. Well, therefore, therefore, Mary gave John, Mary gave John Y dollars. Mary, Mary turned around and gave John Y dollars so that they each get the same hourly wage. So whatever this dollar amount was, Y, the question is very straightforward, very simple. The question is, we just simply have to figure out what is that y, what is this amount of y dollars in terms of x, in terms of x? How much, how much was John or Mary, because they both were paid the same amount. The question, the question is, is actually asking how much was John paid in advance in terms of, it should say in terms of x, it should not say in terms of, oh, in terms of y. The how much was John paid, how much, question is, how much was John paid, well, how much was John paid in advance is the same as how much the Mary was paid in advance because they were they were each paid X dollars. The question simply is how much is this X in terms of Y? We have to figure out the value of X in terms of Y. Enough, enough said. I explained too much actually. Listen, there are two ways you can go about this problem. As always, you know by now. You have watched your, if you have watched your previous videos, we have done tons of algebra problem here. We are at 205 now. We have come across many of these algebra problems. So so so, so that you know by now that when we have algebra problem in the exam. We have two choices. One choice is to do this algebra problem with algebra, the way they expect you to do it, which is to solve this problem in a classical way, in a conventional way, in an orthodox way, in an academic way, in an algebraic way. Another way to, to tackle an algebra problem in the exam is to do it without the algebra. Plug in numbers, make up numbers, and turn, convert this problem into a very simple arithmetic problem, and that's it. It goes faster, there are fewer chances of making mistakes, it's more efficient. So that's the way we're going to do first, okay? And then later on, once we finish doing the fast way, the, the plug-in way, if you insist, if you're hell-bent on it for learning purposes, I will show you how to do it algebraic way also. But let's first do the plug-in method. So here's the plug-in method. Plug-in method. Now when we're doing a plug-in method, the most important requirement in the plug-in method is to come up with numbers that you're going to plug in, the numbers that you're going to use that are friendly, that are easy to work with. For example, they have worked a total of 18 hours and they want same hourly wage. The decision that we have to make here is very straightforward. How much do you want to pay them per hour? Now you could pay them $3 an hour, you could pay them $4.35 an hour, you can pay them whatever the hell you want per hour. I'm just going to, pay, I'm going to pay them $10 an hour. Okay? Um, we're going to pretend that they got $10 an hour. $10 per hour is what they're getting. So 18 hours means, 18 hour means they got $180 in the beginning. $180, which means $180 is to be split evenly, which means John and Mary, John got John got $90 and Mary got $90. Very straightforward, very simple, nothing to it. Now the question is, should John have gotten $90? The answer is no. John worked 10 hours. John worked 10 hours. John worked 10 hours. He got $10 less. He got $10 less than he should have gotten. He, he got stiff. 
he got ten dollar less for ten hours he should have gotten hundred dollars but they only got ninety dollars because what the boss did what the employer did in the beginning is to give them fixed amount they split it 50 50 but they did not work 50 50 amount of the amount of the work similarly mary got mary got ninety dollars but mary only worked eight hours mary mary worked only eight hours she got paid she got paid ten dollars more she got paid ten dollars more it was very straightforward very simple so what mary did was what mary did was because of the fact mary and john worked together she wants to be on good terms with john obviously so what she did was she took the ten extra dollars that she got paid the ten dollars that should that she should not have gotten at the, at the rate of at the rate of ten dollars per hour, she should have gotten eighty dollars because she worked eight hours. So she she took ten dollars of that ninety dollars and gave it to John. She gave Mary. So here this implies that Mary gave John ten dollars, and that ten dollar that Mary gave John is what we are calling Y. Mary gave John Y dollars. So this is our Y. Y equals ten. We are done. That is, we are done. And how much was our X? Can you figure out how much was X? John and Mary were each paid X dollars. How much is X? X is right here. They each got ninety dollars. This is our X. That's it. We are done. The question is, how much was John paid in advance? Which is same as asking how much was Mary paid in advance? How much was John paid in advance? The answer is John was paid ninety dollars in advance, which is our X. And the question is, this X. How do we write this thing in terms of Y? Well, how much is y? y is 10. If y is 10, then how do I express x in terms of y? 9 times y. That's it, we're done. That's our answer. 9 times y. x equals 9 times y. So that's one way of doing it. Without the algebra, without any algebra at all. Simple. But the key here, there are, there are two requirements here, okay? One requirement is that you, you plug in smart numbers, numbers that are friendly to work with, as I already said. The second thing is that you have to pay attention. Just because you're doing plugging in method does not mean that you just, just go willy-nilly. You still have to pay attention. Your arithmetic has to be right. You have to remain calm. You have to remain collected. Make sure your arithmetic is correct. But that's what it is. A simple arithmetic is what it is. It's a very simple problem. The guy gave $90 to Mary. He gave $90 to John. But John worked 10 hours. He should have gotten $10 more. So she gives him $10. The question is, how do we express 90 in terms of 10? Well, if you want to express 90, 90 in terms of 10, or 90 is 9 times 10. We're done. That's all. Let's do the algebraic question. Eh? Now we'll do the algebraic way. In the algebraic way, of course, we have no luxury of using unit numbers, which is why it's called algebra algebraic method, the classical way. This is the classical method. Classical or if you like, algebraic method. So they each got, they each got X dollars. They each got X dollars. The total number of hours that they work, total number of hours work was 18. Since they worked total number of 18 hours and they got each got X dollars, which means they got total of 2X dollars for 18 hours. This is the hourly wage. Mary got X dollars. And John got X dollars, which means the two together they got 2X dollars for having done 18 hours of work. So their hourly wage comes out to be X over 9. This is their hourly wage. Very straightforward, very simple. John worked, John worked 10 hours. Well, if he worked 10 hours, if he worked 10 hours and this is the hourly wage, the amount of money that she should have gotten, the amount of money this implies that John, John should have gotten 10 times this amount because 10 hours times the hourly wage. He should have gotten 10x over 9. Okay, just give me give me a second here. I drop the cap. If I don't pick it up right away. 
I'll, I'll, I will forget where I dropped it, then I'll look for it for five minutes. So that's it. He should have gotten this much amount. Let's pick up speed here. Mary worked eight hours. Well, this is the hourly wage. So Mary should have gotten, Mary should have gotten eight, eight times this amount. Eight times x over nine. But did she get 8 times x over 9? No, she did not get x times x over 9. She actually got, let's, let's write this at 8x over 9. But, but she actually got, but she actually got, what did she actually get? She actually got x dollars. She actually got x dollars, which can be written as 9x over 9. She was paid 9x over 9. She should have gotten 8x over 8. How much more did she get than she was supposed to get? She got a ninth of an x more than she got supposed to pay. She was paid. First, she will make a note. Let's continue here. She was paid. She, you see, one again, one more time. She should have gotten eight times this amount. Eight x over nine. Eight x over nine. But in reality, she got nine x over nine. Nine x over nine is x. That's what she got. They each got x dollars. x dollars can be written as x dollars can be written as 9x over 9. So she got 9x over 9 dollars. She should have gotten 8x over 9 dollars. She got a ninth of an x dollars extra. She, she was paid x over 9 dollars extra. Which is what they're calling y. Which is what they're calling y. That's what it is. That's your equation. Which means, listen, I'm going to continue here from here. She got x over 9 extra, which is what they're calling y, which means y equals x over 9. And they want us to express this amount they got, they got paid in advance, which is x dollars, in terms of y. Well, x dollars, in x in terms of y is simply, x is simply 9 times y. So that's the algebraic term. There's nothing to it, actually, but it does require more effort. It does require more thinking. It does require more concentration, and it does have... Uh, because of the fact that it requires more work and more concentration, therefore it has greater chances of making some careless mistake. So don't go that route. Do you understand? This was purely for learning purposes. This is not what I do. Well, this is not what I do in the real exam. In the real exam, you just want to find some quick and dirty way to get the job done. Your goal in the exam, throughout the entire exam, is to get the loot and get the hell out. Do you understand? Don't linger around. No, there is no need to show off how much algebra you know. Get the hell out of there, as I said, get the loot and get the hell out of there. That's all it is. Let's carry on then. Let's go to the next problem. Problem number 206. Problem number 206. Problem 206 is a very simple, very straightforward geometry problem. 206. Point Y, we are told, which is not shown, we are told that it lies on Y axis. So here's our X axis, there is Y axis, somewhere here is point Y. And of course, it will have the coordinates of 0 and some Y coordinates which we do not know yet. We are told that the area of triangle OPR is 12. There is our O, there is our P, we are told, P, we are told is 4, 0. Four, zero. And this is the point R. This triangle here, OPR, this triangle here, OPR, the area of this triangle is 12. The question is very straightforward. The question simply is, what is the y coordinate of the point R? What is the y coordinate of point R? Very simple, very straightforward problem. How do you find the area of a triangle? Area of a triangle. Area of, uh, area of a triangle. Or better yet, the area of this triangle OPR. Area of O of the triangle OPR is simply one half times base, which we know is four, because we are told the x coordinate of point P is four, so it's four times the height, right here, let's call it height for h, 
and we just have to solve for h. And we know that the area of the triangle OPR, we are told that it is 12. So we just substitute it in here. That's all it is. It's very simple as I said. No need to make a fuss about it. The 2 is going to cancel out with the 4. With the 4. So we get 2h is equal to 12 and therefore h is equal to 6. h is equal to 6. The y coordinate, the h is 6. Of course h is going to be 6 because base is 4, base times height is 24, 6 times 4 is 24 and you take a half of that, half of 24 is 12, that's all. Let's go on to the next one, number 207, number 207. Number 207, we are told that we have car A is 20 miles, 20 miles behind car B. We are also told that A is going 58 miles per hour. Car A is going at the rate of 58 miles per hour. Car B, we are told, is going at the speed of 50 miles per hour. The question is very straightforward. The question is how many hours, how many hours before A catches up with B, catches up with B and drives 8 miles ahead. So not only car B has to catch up with A, despite the fact that he's starting out 20 miles behind him, but he has to actually get 8 miles ahead of him. And the question is how long will it take him to do that? How long will it take him to achieve that goal? That's all it is. Here's the situation here. Here's our car A, or other car A, car A is 20 miles behind, car A is 20 miles behind, so here is our car B, it's going at 50 miles per hour, and car A starts out 20 miles behind him, this is our car A, and he has to go 8 miles in front of him. And Question simply is, how long will it take? Now listen, there's a straightforward method of doing this problem. Don't try to figure out their individual time. Don't try to figure out how long it will take for A to make this journey. Don't try to figure out how long it will take for B to make a certain amount of journey. It will take too much time, it will take too much effort. We are not interested in any of that. All we want to find out is, how long will it take for B to catch up with A? Or rather the other way around, how long will it take for A to catch up with B? And to get 8 miles ahead. That's what it is. Well, the only thing that matters to us in this problem, the only thing that we are interested in, the only thing that plays a role in, in, our, in, our, in our discussion is this. That what we have to figure out, what we have to understand is that A has to travel 20 miles plus 8 miles extra. A has to travel, has to travel 28, 28 miles extra. Because however amount of time that we are talking about, in that amount of time, of course B will continue traveling in that amount of time. Which this, this distance is same for both of them. This this distance that we see there, the amount of time, amount of this this distance that they will travel in the given number of hours that will take them, that distance is same for B because that's that's he has to first catch up and then go eight miles ahead. So only thing that he has to the only extra amount of miles that he has to travel is 28 miles. The question is, at at what difference in t t speed? The question here is, this guy is going 50 miles an hour. This guy is going 50 miles an hour. So the difference is, the difference in speed, difference is 8 miles per hour, that's what it is. The rest will negate each other, the rest will negate each other. That's what it is. That's what it boils down to. The question is very straightforward, very simple. The question is, the question simply is, how long does it take to travel 28 miles at 8 miles an hour? 28 miles at 8 miles an hour, this is how long it's going to take, 28 miles. 28 miles, would you agree, would, 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 you, would it be okay with you, would you agree that 28 miles can be written as 24 plus 4? Of course, why wouldn't you agree? How long does it travel, to tra how long does it take, how long does it take to go 24 miles, 
how long does it go to 24 miles? It's 8 miles per hour, because that's the difference in their speed. It's 8 miles per hour to travel 24 miles, which of course is nothing more than 8 plus 8 plus 8. In each one of these 8 miles will take 1 hour. This will be being too silly now. I'm, I'm going to pick up speed. So this is going to take 3 hours. And how about this extra 4 miles? Another 4 miles, if you want to travel another 4 miles, at the speed of 8 miles per hour will take another half an hour. That's all it is. It will take, it will take a total of 3 and a half hour to achieve the goal that we want to achieve, which is not only to catch up with the guy, but to get 8 miles ahead. Because the difference in their speed is 8 miles. That's the, that's the only thing that plays part. Let's go to the next one, number 208. Number 208. We are told that the average for the last n days is 50. We are also told that today's production today's production was 90. And as a result, as a result, the average shot up to 55. Average for the last n days was 50. The question simply is, the question simply is, what is this n? Question simply is, how much is this n? This n number of days, with n number of days that we're talking about, how much is it? Again, there are a couple of ways we can go about it. You could actually sit there and do it in a very classical way, very algebraic way, very traditional, very orthodox, very, very academic way, if you wanted to. Or there's a quick and dirty way. The quick and dirty way is this. Look, we want the average of 55. So here's our n days. Let's pretend that we have n days and our, our average, our average over those n days was 50. The easiest, simplest, quickest way where you can present a scenario where the average for the n days in the past was 50. Listen carefully. The quickest, the simplest, most efficient method that you can use to represent the dip or to depict a scenario where the average for a given number of days was 50 was to pretend that every single day we produce 50 units. Every single day we produce 50 units. So there we go. 50, 50, 50, 50, go on and so forth. I shouldn't write that if you so close to it. So on the first day we produce 50 units, second day we produce 50 units, third day we produce 50 units, so on and so forth. We kept producing 50 units. And on the last day, we produce 90 units. And these are our end days. These are the end days. Are you with me? Okay, I'm going to pick up speed here. I'm taking too long here. Because when I try to explain simple things so in a, in a in too, 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 too simplistic way, it becomes too idiotic. Listen, 90 days, okay? 90. Our, our production level in the last day was 90. What would have happened if our production was, in the last day was 55? Because that's the, uh, that's the new average. That's the new average, isn't it? How much extra do we have here? We want, we want the average, overall average, to be 55. How much extra do we have? We have 5, 8 minus, is it 8? 8 minus 5 is 3. We have 35 extra units. Those 35 extra units, these are 35 extra units. To be spread, to be spread evenly over n days. Oh, I just gave you the answer, didn't I? Over n days. So, instead of 50 units, we take the 35 and distribute evenly. Give this 5 to this guy, 5 to that guy, 5 to this guy, 5 to that guy. How many days can we spread it 35 evenly so that everybody has 55 now? The answer is 7. It's just 35 over 5, which is 7. That's what it is. They must have produced, they must have produced an average of 50 units per day for the last seven days, and on the eighth day, they produced 90 units. And as a result of that, the average shot up to 55. That's what it is. Now, if you like, and if you're hell-bent on it, only if you're hell-bent on it, I will show you the algebraic way. It's not necessary. For the real exam, it is not necessary. Do you understand? The sheer waste of time to do it algebraically in the real exam. Where can we show the algebraic method? Let's do the algebraic method right here. Here's what's going on. 
So we have n days, and on n days the average was 50, which means 50 times n was the total production over the n days. And on the last day we produced 90. So how many days do we have all together? Well, we have n days to begin with, and then this last day, which means we have n plus 1 day. And now, as a result, the new average is 55. That's what it is. We simply have to solve this equation. And when we solve this equation, you will see that it comes out to be exactly 7. n equals 7. n equals 7. If you like, we can do it. So it's going to be 50n plus 90 equals 55 times n. 55 times n plus 55 times 1, which is 55. Subtract 50n from both sides, we get 5n equals 90 minus, same, same exact thing, 90 minus 55, the exact same thing. It doesn't change, it's the same logic, except this is more formal, this is more academic, and therefore n equals 7. But that's where it's coming from, this 35 that you see there is your 35 extra units, and the question is how many days can I spread these 35 extra units evenly over, so that every day I get 5 extra units, the answer is 7, that's all. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.